What's up YouTube, Redbeard's Garage, and welcome back to another video. Today, we're finally getting back at the street go-kart. Now I've been actually dreading the street go-kart build, uh, adding more to it for a while. You can see in my last video, which really wasn't a build video, it's just more of an update on it, that I'm pretty frustrated with it. Every time I go to work on this thing, it, it causes problems. So today we're going to just try to get that new engine plate adapted to the frame and maybe even get the engine bolted up. We're going to go ahead and throw the torque converter on that 9 horse and um, hopefully be able to get everything lined up, throw the axle. Um, we got to pull the axle, sand everything down because leaving it out in the rain, it has rusted a little bit. So we're going to pull everything off the, the axle, polish it up real nice, and then reassemble everything with the new sprocket because it had a 35 uh, chain sprocket on there and now we're going to put a number 40 chain. So guys, without further ado, let's jump right into this thing. I'm not looking forward to it, but uh, let's bang this thing out so hopefully we can see it run in the next few days. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take off this oil catch can. So basically what we have to do is uh, have to cut this engine plate off and weld on the larger engine plate because the big block engines take the, uh, the wider bolt pattern. And this oil catch can I'm probably not going to reuse on this uh, nitrous engine. Now I'm taking off all the nitrous hoses because I'm not going to run nitrous at first on this uh, go-kart and we're changing out the steering wheel. So, I won't have the nitrous uh, mounted on the steering wheel anymore. We're going to switch that up so I can pull all this uh, nitrous line off here. Alright, the next thing we're going to do is take off these axle uh, collars and we're going to drop this axle because we have to pull that number 35 chain or number 35 sprocket off to put the new 40 sprocket on. So, we're going to go ahead and take out the three bolts on each side and get this thing dropped. I also got to loosen these collars and slide them out of the way so the bearing can slide, let this axle drop down. Alright, now we have everything loosened up other than the, the bearings. The bearing collars are kind of rusted on there. I know I should be keeping these things under tarps, but that'd be a lot of tarps I need to buy, which I'm going to buy them eventually. One thing I've also noticed is the brake rotors bent. It was, I guess, bent from uh, from the factory. So at a certain point of rotation, when you rotate the axle, it actually grabs a little bit. So we'll have to see if we can get that bend out of there. It just puts everything in a little bit of a bind, which is a common issue when working with uh, Chinese parts. Okay, now I have to cut these gas tank mounts that I had previously um, put on because the gas tank's actually going to have to be a little bit higher. I'm not going to use a pulse pump on this engine. So this would have been too low for gravity to do its job. So in either way the engine would have hit it. So I'm going to cut all this off, get it removed and uh, then we can start cutting. We need to finish dropping this axle. I'm letting some some PB blaster soak on the bearings to hopefully let them slide on that shaft and then we can go to cutting that engine plate off. Done. After we get the engine all mounted up, we're going to clean all this uh, old piping up. You got to be real easy with this piping because it's so super thin walled. I am getting all the pipe bent right now to rebuild this whole go kart exactly like this, just out of quality roll cage piping. So it should be pretty sweet to put a bigger engine on. So I just took a hammer and a chisel, like a actually a punch. And I knocked this bearing. It was just seized on from where it had rusted. I'm going to take this whole axle shaft and I'm going to sand it down, make it polished again, and make sure I oil it before I'm setting it outside. So now we can drop this axle down off of these hangers. And we'll, we'll worry about the axle 
later on. So now we can get to uh, adapting the new engine plate. We're going to cut most of this one off and uh, have to figure out how I'm going to weld that new one on. All right, now I got to cut this engine plate off to make room for the new engine plate. Only problem is I welded the crap out of this thing. I welded it every place I could possibly get a weld. So what I'm going to do is just cut around this square piping, uh, square tubing, cut all the way around it and just get as much of this engine plate off as possible. And I necessarily don't have to worry about what's left on top of the bars. I can weld over top of it because I think it's going to be way too time consuming to get all that off. So I'm going to go ahead and start cutting all this junk off. piece uh, cut all off there and I tried to cut these welds but it was going to be extremely hard so what I'm going to do is I notched this new engine plate you can see I notched the two top corners of this side to fit this really nice now I'm going to clamp it to hold it uh, level and just do some welds on the top and then we'll flip the go-kart over and fully weld it on the bottom so uh, let's get this thing welded on Okay, so I flipped this go-kart over to get some good welds, and you can see I had to stack the welds. The reason for that is the old engine plate wasn't welded on as much as I'd liked, so I did a new bead on the old in what was left over of the old engine plate to the frame, and then the new engine plate to the frame as well. I am thinking about going ahead and adding another piece of square tubing right here, and as well right here to stiffen it up because I feel like this may cause more vibrations uh, along the chassis of the go-kart this thing badly needs to be sanded and uh, painted i really didn't care i was so mad at this go-kart i didn't even care about really taking good care of it but we're definitely going to uh, be doing a lot of stuff to this thing and i really don't want it to to rust away so i am going to be sanding tearing this thing completely down after we ride it a little bit and get everything really fine-tuned and make sure we won't be cutting and welding on it anymore and then we'll do a probably go get it sandblasted and powder coated red there's a lot of things like these rivets i would like to drill and get rid of and just you know like i did here i put a little bead i'd like to do that every you know four inches or so on this sheet metal and get rid of all those rivets and then like i said before we're going to have to cut this front end off and move it forward and this is bent both sides are are kind of bent up so i'm going to go ahead and get these last two pieces put in there and we're also going to start sanding on that old rusty axle. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling this axle, everything off of it. Uh, I'm gonna pull all the collars off of it and everything uh, just to make sure we get the axle really nicely polished. And then I'm going to take something, I'm not sure what yet, and uh, rub down the axle to keep it, kind of prevent it from uh, rusting. Everything is seized on this. It really drives me crazy that I, that I left it out there, but can't do nothing about it now. Okay, so we got the axle uh, clamped down to the workbench. I'm gonna take some 220 sandpaper and just lay it over the axle like this and pull it back and forth and you can polish an axle in just a few minutes uh, with this method. I'm also, once I get everything polished out, I'm going to feel on the axle, make sure there's no burrs anywhere that would stop uh, any of these hubs or bushings or hubs or these bearings from uh, sliding on the axle. So I'm gonna get this polished up and then we can reassemble everything back onto the axle and throw it back on the go-kart.
we got the axle all shined up now we can go ahead and start assembling all the hubs and brakes and everything back onto this axle and install it on the street go-kart Okay, so I flipped the go-kart around and went ahead and threw the tires on it. You can see the nine horses all on there. I got the uh, sprocket and everything lined up. I just need to cut my chain down the sides, throw my chain on there, and then I can tension the chain up. Everything looks really nice and clean on this thing, though. Only problem I'm having is the exhaust. You can see the studs right there. So if I try to put this exhaust header on, it actually hits the frame right there. That sucks because it's, I'm talking, it's just a hair away from fitting. So what I may do is bore these um, bolt holes down so I can clock it just a hair and see if I can do it like that. If I can't get it to fit by boring out these holes, then I can actually cut this flange off and then bolt the flange to the engine and clock it how I need to and weld it in place. It would work perfect and be sticking right out the center and that would look pretty sweet with the spooler on there. So for now, I'm gonna go ahead and get that chain cut, throw the chain on there, tension up the motor, uh, tension up the chain and tighten down the motor, and uh, everything will be good. I do need to lock this sprocket down as well, tighten the, the set screws on it and put those collars up against it. So let's get this thing done. Okay, so some bad news on the street go-kart. I forgot to check and make sure the tires was taller than the sprocket and they're indeed the same exact size I have a different sprocket for this but I wanted to put this one on it so it'd be really torquey so this means I gotta remove the motor which it isn't you know tightened down the bolts are in it but they're not you know torqued down or anything but I gotta pull the whole freaking axle this really really sucks 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 so I'm going to pull that axle again and put the new one on it. I can't remember what teeth this one is, but um, probably like a 50 or a 55. So we're going to get some really good top end, but I wanted this thing mostly for torque. So I guess I'm going to start pulling the axle and swap that sprocket out. Okay, so I got the sprocket all switched out. You can see it on there. Now the only thing I have to do is the chain is actually hitting that rear pulley. You can see it's kind of pushed to the side. So I'm going to have to pull the rear pulley off and put a, uh, a spacer or a washer behind it. Then I'll have to do the same thing with the front pulley to get it aligned back up. Once we get the torque converter all set up, we can uh, tension up the chain and bolt the engine down and then address that exhaust problem that we're having with it hitting the frame. I gotta figure out what I wanna do about it. And I am gonna put the original gas tank back on top of this engine. There's no point in me making some type of a bracket to bolt the gas tank up to the frame. I'm just gonna bolt that original one back on there. It might not look pretty at first, but this whole go-kart don't look pretty. It's all 
uh, tattered up and got a bunch of raw metal on it and I know I need to prime it but I just got so much more stuff I want to do to this I don't want to prime it and then have to sand it down uh, if I need to weld some more stuff in the future another problem is the air filter actually hits the frame right here no matter how you put it so what I'm going to do is go to Napa and get a 90 uh, piece of radiator hose that'll fit this and then run the air filter sticking out of the back I think it'll look pretty sweet because of my my plans I have on the exhaust at a later date we're just going to get this exhaust working on there so we can ride it and see how this motor performs and then we're going to build our new exhaust for it we also got the go power sport steering wheel put on there I need to go get a few more I'm going to buy all new um, Allen head bolts for that actually because those cheap ones that came with that cheap eBay steering wheel they're horrible quality they actually bend when you torque them down so I'm going to go down to my local co-op and buy some nice stainless steel ones I am going to order off Amazon uh, a carbon fiber trim piece like this and horn button to go on the go power sport steering wheel because this old steering wheel is actually going to go on the the parts wall so so I can add a little bit more bling to my wall up there okay guys as always the thing fought me every chance it got tried to get everything done tonight but we're gonna have to make some part store runs and I don't want to push this video back any further we'll just uh, make an episode 5 on it I'm sure there'll be plenty more episodes to go on this go-kart we still have that front end to address like you've seen we got the steering wheel mounted I just need to pick up some bolts tomorrow to finish that up got to get the elbow for the air filter to make it clear the frame and then we'll figure out the exhaust on the next video as well uh, I'm going to space that um, rear pulley out with some washers. I'll do that on the next video. I just want to kind of get this one up. I feel like I've got enough footage. Um, I don't like stretching these videos out too long. Guys, tell me what you think of this street go-kart. It's, it's definitely got a curse to this frame. I don't know what happened on this frame, but uh, definitely something did because it's haunting me, that's for sure. Uh, don't forget to check out Go Power Sports, guys. Get all your go-kart parts from there. Use that discount code REDBEARD. They'll really help you out if you have any questions or any problems with their products. And check us out on Facebook. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and share these videos. It helps us out a lot, guys. We've got some big giveaways coming up, so make sure to stay tuned. And uh, Adam Coker, if you're watching, please uh, hit me back on that performance kit you won. Uh, I'm going to give you a few more days, and if, if he doesn't ever reply back, then I'm going to pick another winner and send that thing out to you guys. Uh, definitely don't want it sitting around not getting used. But guys, you know the drill. Always come back to Redbeard's Garage. I'm out.